Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating a model using an extrusion. And we're going to also look at the rib command and we're going to be using Inventor 2020. As you can see from the drawing here, the part is really not that complicated, but it does have some steps and some fillets and all kinds of other things that are going on. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this one and hopefully I can teach you how to use the rib command. Okay, so looking at this drawing, a quick dive of it, I can see that the centers of these two holes here are spaced out at the 120 millimeters. And then I do have, that's telling me that this center is located from this edge at 60 down. So I can figure that part out with no problems. I do have a 20 uh, thickness on that one. There's a 10 on the back and then there's the rib that we're going to take a look at once we get to that. And then we have a counter bore. And one thing I really notice on this one is that it's saying it's on both sides. So it's going to look like this on one side and on the other. So it gives me all the information for the counter bores. And it did give me the six deep. And it's also dimensioned here on my drawing six deep. One other thing that I notice is that this kind of has an offset on it. So I can see that the overall length of this is sitting at 40. And the distance here is 25. And I have another one that's sitting at 10. So that should give me a remainder of 5 in the back. And that should equal up to the 40. So the simple math on it is that the overall length of this minus these two. Everything else on this drawing is pretty typical of what you'll see. So let's go ahead and switch over to Inventor. And I'll try my best to switch back and forth and explain some of the things if, if it's not really clear in the drawing. Okay, so in Inventor, once you have it open up, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the new icon. And then I'm going to make sure I go to metric. And then I'll select the standard millimeter IPT. You can double click on that icon or you can select it and hit create. The next thing I need to do is start figuring out which plane do I want to sketch on. Well, depending on how you have the drawing oriented, you need to first define which part do you want to be as the front. If you can go back and remember your basic isometrics, uh, this is going to be considered the front view. This is the right side view, and we can see the top view kind of looking down on it. So I know that I want these two circles here facing frontwards. So that's the way I'm going to orient it in an event in inventor. Okay, so here I can see on my view cube that I have the front icon. I'm just going to click right on this edge, and that's going to kind of turn it sideways. So this is what a typical isometric is going to look like. So now I know that I can create my part in the correct orientation. I'll expand the origin tab and you can see the planes that's going to come in. Once I click on this large sketch icon here at the top, those planes are going to come up and they're going to stay up until I select one. So I'm going to build this with these two circles looking at it on the front. So I don't want to select the XY plane because I'm going to kind of build it in the middle and extrude it going outward. So I'm going to use this YZ plane. Once I select that, it turns and orients right. One thing I like to do is always keep my eye on this view cube up here just to make sure that the words are in the correct orientation. All right, so next I'm going to create the profile or just a quick sketch of it. So I'm going to start with the line. I'll click here. And what I like to do with a couple of my points is I'll go ahead and put the dimensions on them. So I'm going to go straight down this direction. And I'm going to type in 20. I'll zoom back a little bit. And then I want to go this direction. A distance of 70. I can go up. And I don't know the height of that yet. So it really doesn't matter. I'll click here. I'll go this direction. If you want to type in 10. Then these next two lines. I want to orient them right where these two are together. So I'm going to come down and you can see I get the dotted lines that's showing me that I'm going to link up to that endpoint. Do a left click there. And then finally click on this green dot. Okay, I'm looking here at the bottom. It's saying I'm still missing one more dimension. And that dimension that we're missing is that height. So looking at the drawing, the part that I created was this L shape here. So that distance that I'm looking for is going to be from this edge 
going up to the center of here or this edge here. Both of those should be the exact same point. So let's go ahead and put that dimension on this drawing. Let's go to dimension from this edge to that edge. And once I place that dimension, it's going to give me 60. Now, if you want this part to be perfectly centered, you have some options or different ways that you can do that. You just got to notice that we don't have the bottom half of this created yet. So I can't truly center this unless I kind of phantom that part in. I can do that and make them construction lines. That way they won't be included in the sketch. And I think that's probably a good idea to do this. And that way this drawing will be truly centered. But I can go ahead and do one direction of centering this. So the distance from this line to that line is going to be 70. That represents the overall length of here. So when I put my dimension from here to this yellow dot, because that's what it's missing in reference to, once I click and place that dimension, it's giving me the length of that line. I'm just going to click on the 70 and divide that by 2. Now you could do that in either direction. You don't have to pick this line and put that dimension on it. You could have perfectly went from this one to that one and did the exact same steps and would have gave you the same answer. Okay, so now I'm missing one more dimension, which is telling me here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just going to kind of phantom in my bottom half of what I'm going to create. So I'll start with the line command. Click here. I'll go down a distance. And I'm going to go ahead and add the, well, no, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to add that. I'm just going to make it the 120 that's going down. So I'm going to go down a distance of 60. Let's kind of zoom out a little bit. I can go over this direction 20. And you can see that that line is a little bent, but uh, we can fix that. And then let's just go up just a little bit past here. Okay. So the one thing I want to do is first go ahead and make this line horizontal. And this is one of those reasons why I make sure that the words right are in the correct orientation. Because I can use my constraints in the correct orientation. So I'll click horizontal. And then I'll select this line. And it looks like it's giving me a preview of a vertical. So I quite don't know why it's doing it a little bit backwards. But you can see that I'm getting a vertical line there. If yours is doing that as well. Go ahead and click on the vertical constraint and you're going to see that it will give you a horizontal line. But usually it doesn't work that way. It will should, should give you a preview. But I'm glad that it, it did tell me which orientation that it was going to and I was able to catch it. Okay. Let's go ahead and trim this part off here at the top. And now you can see that I have a couple of different dimensions. And I did mess up here. I put in 60 when that actual distance is 40 because that distance is actually pulling from this edge. So I'm just going to double click on this line and change that to 40. And now if I want the overall length of that, it should be this is going to the bottom circle and that's to the top circle. So that overall length is 120, which really tells me that my center of this is going to be sitting on this line. There's two ways that I can kind of manipulate this and do it. And I'll go ahead and pull these dimensions out. And I'm just going to give you these for an example of what different ways that you can kind of center this if you got multiple dimensions. The first way is going to use a reference dimension. And I'll go to dimension, select this line and this one. And once I place it, auto, sorry, inventor is going to give me an error and say that, hey, you're going to over constrain this. Do you want that to happen? Once you accept that, you're going to see it's going to come with a dimension with a parentheses around it. Basically means that this dimension does not control anything. If I change any of these numbers, this dimension will change. And now I can put a dimension, kind of like I did with the first one to center it. So I can go from this edge to that center, place that dimension, and then I can use this dimension and divide it by 2. So that's one way that I can make sure that it's centered. If I don't want to go about doing it that direction, and I'll just take off those, I can actually use these dimensions and drive it off of using all of these dimensions. So I can go to dimension from here to here. And once I place that dimension, what I'm going to tell Inventor is that with an open parenthesis, I'll select this dimension plus symbol, this dimension plus symbol, this dimension, close the parentheses and divide that by two. So it's just going to add up all of those numbers and it'll divide it by two. 
Both ways will give you the exact same solution. The last step that I'm going to do is because when I go to the inventor command, I mean the extrusion command, that it's going to try to pick these two profiles. It's want to select this one and this one, so you're going to have to tell it which one to do that. If you want to alleviate that step, I'm going to select this line. I'm going to hold down the control button. Let's get out of the dimension command first. Select this, this line, hold down the control button, and select the other two lines. And then I'm just going to make them all construction. So that just tells Inventor that I'm going to I'm using this to get to a center or something of that nature, but I don't want to include that in the sketch. So go ahead and finish the sketch. Use the extrude command, and you're going to only see that one thing is going to light up. Usually both of them would light up if you omit the step of making this into a construction. So it's going to light up this one, or it's going to wait and ask you to pick the profile. Let's go ahead and make this symmetric. And it had a has a distance of 60. And okay. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just strictly going to work here on the top half. Is that I'm going to go ahead and put that circle that's located here. So let's go ahead and put a, a sketch on this face. Select the face. Select this last icon, which is the create sketch. Go to the circle command. And I'm just going to come to this line until I find the green dot that's representing the midpoint. Click on that and then go to the end point and click. And then use the escape button. I'm going to use that same construction feature that I did before. So I'm going to select this line and make it construction. Once again, all that's going to do is alleviate any confusion for an inventor. And it will just make your extrusion go that much better. Finish sketch extrude it picks up one profile now this one i can't do it symmetrically and i can't send it one direction otherwise i'll have to do this command twice but it's easier to make it asymmetric so i know that and i can zoom out a little bit here i know that this distance going this direction and it tells me on the drawing that it's going to be a distance of 25 so you can see here that distance that i'm referring to is 25 and then I'm going to go backwards this direction, 15, because remember we calculated that early. 40 minus 25 minus 10 should give me 5. So I should be able to put in 25 going one direction, 15 going the other direction, and that should solve our problem. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to put in for distance A, and that's the one that's highlighted here. It's going to be 25. Once I click on this bottom one, I'll make that one 15. And you can see that both of those is going to create and it's giving me the right distance that I want. Go ahead and select OK. And then it'll create the circle part at the top. All right. So next, let's go ahead and create that rib that's going through here. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to create a sketch. And now I need to define what face I want to put that sketch on. So I have the, or the origin opened up here. And I'm just going to hover over one of these planes until it looks like it's going right through the middle. In this case, it's going to be the YZ plane. Go ahead and select it. Then I'm going to use the Slice Geometry button here at the bottom. Or you can use the Function Key 7, which will do the exact same thing. So once I do that, you're going to see it's going to slice to the middle of this. That rib goes from this endpoint to that endpoint. So let's go ahead and project in those things. So I'm going to go to Project Geometry, select this edge, and that edge. Escape out of that command. Go to the Line command. Create it from this endpoint to that endpoint. Okay, so if I got any other yellow lines, I need to make sure that I put those on construction. So I'm going to select this line, and I'm going to hold down the Control button. I'll select this yellow line and I do have one that's running vertical right along here now yours may have picked that up or not and if it didn't don't worry about it but once you have all three of those selected go ahead and select the construction option let's go ahead and finish sketch and now we're able to create this with a rib so let's go to the rib command and inside the rib command it's going to automatically pick the profile for me couple of things I need to do is I need to select and say that I want that to go right along this face. I'll give it its width, which is going to be 10. 
and then I need to tell it the orientation. So once I click on which direction I want it to go, you're going to see that it will fill in all of that area with the correct rib, just with one line. Go ahead and select OK. And you can see here that this bottom portion is done, or sorry, the top portion is done. Let's go ahead and work on the bottom portion. So I'm going to go ahead and select this face, last icon. Go ahead and create a line. You know what, instead of creating a line, let's go ahead and use a rectangle. So I'll collect a rectangle, I'll pick a point here, and then another point somewhere along here. Let's put some dimensions on this. So I'm going to dimension from here, going across. And you notice that the bottom of this thing is a radius, and the radius is sitting at 20. So this needs to be a distance or a diameter of 40. This height is going to go from that line down to here. And remember, that's going to be our 60. Let's go ahead and put this on top of here by using the collinear constraint. So I'll select that line and that line. And then we have one more thing that we need to do. We need to put these centers in line with each other. So I'm going to use this vertical constraint. I'm going to select this center. And then I'm going to find the green dot that's located on my rectangle line. And you're going to see that now both of those are going to highlight. If you look here at the bottom, it says that it's fully constrained. But I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to go ahead and put the rounded part here at the bottom. So I'm going to create a circle. I'll find this midpoint. Click on it. Then I'll click this endpoint. Use the trim command. Cut off the top portion. And then, since this is going to be two complete profiles, I'll go ahead and put this line on the construction layer. So go ahead and select this line. And then select construction. You can see that these are an open profile here at the top, so there's no need for me to go ahead and change those on construction, although it is a good practice. Let's go ahead and finish sketch. Choose the extrude option. You see that it picks the profile. I'm going to send this a distance of 20, and then I'm going to change the direction. Go ahead and select OK. And now you have that portion on. Let's go ahead and create these circles, and then we will do our fillets. Okay, so starting here at the top, you remember that I told you that this is a counterpour with another circle on the inside. So I'll go to the hole command, and then I'm going to tell it that I want to use a counterbor, so I'll select this icon here. I'm going to tell it that the top distance between here is 30, the depth that I'm going to go down is 6, and the through part that's going through it is going to be 20. So once you fill that in, the first thing you're going to do is going to select this face, and then you're going to select the edge of this circle, and it's going to place it at the center. Go ahead and select OK. I'm going to take a look at it on the back side, so I'm going to click on this angle of my view cube. Go back to the hole command. I'm going to select this face, and then that edge. And there's no need for us to change anything. All the information is exactly the same. Go ahead and select OK. Let's go back and take a look at it at the front. And now let's go ahead and put our circle that's located here or a hole in that case. So I'll go back to the hole command. This time I'm not going to use a counter bore, so I'm just going to tell it that it has no seat. The diameter of this one is going to be 15. And we're going to send it through everything. So what I need to do now is select this face, and then select this circle part. And go ahead and select OK. All right, so the last steps that we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put some fillets on this one, and then we can call this one done. All right, so I'm going to go to the fillet command. And the first one I'm going to do is going to be a fillet of 10, and that's going to be these, these parts located around in these corners. So let's go ahead and change it to 10. I'm going to kind of flip this up here at the bottom just by selecting that bottom portion. Then I'll select that edge, 
I'm going to flip it around and then I'll select that edge. Go ahead and add since I want to create another one. And next this fillet is going to be set at a radius of 3. So I'll go ahead and change this number to 3. And I'm going to put it on this edge. I'm going to select this portion on my view cube. And then that way I can kind of work with the two front ones. And I'll select that edge. And I'm just going to keep working around here on the view cube. And I'll select that edge. So rotate it back around. And then let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now we have all of our fillets done. We have our rib placed in, and we do have all of our holes. So I hope you enjoyed this one, uh, especially with the rib command. You can see how easy it is to create uh, some ribs and things of that nature if you want to put them in your structure. Uh, the counter bores and the, the extrusions, all of that stuff, uh, you'll get used to doing that over and over again. But I wanted to make sure I threw in a different command for you on this exercise. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will definitely see you in the next video. Thank you.